Here's another example about the randomized complete block design. So I made up a data set here, um, and the idea is I have um, a plate that has maybe um, a different kind of uh, reflectivity level depending on whether or not it's from it has this type of coating on it or another type of coating on it. Um, so my factor is coating. Um, and then you might have some block there, say I'm, I'm getting these different plates from different manufacturers. So I have some coated plates and some uncoated plates um, from each of two manufacturers, say. Um, in this scenario, um, if block is random and the factor is fixed, that means that I'm thinking in the back of my head that I have lots of different kinds of manufacturers that I want to get these plates from. And um, I want to make inferences to the entire population of um, manufacturers just by randomly selecting a couple of manufacturers. Um, and if the factor is fixed, that means I only have two types of coding that I'm interested in, and both of those codings are part of my study. So in that scenario, what we need is um, a special kind of test within the GLM. Because the mean squares are, the expected mean squares that we would get from this test are a little bit different, um, and SAS doesn't quite do it right, um, let's check out Dr. Longnecker's page. You can see the um, web page up here. Um, this is for F1 and F2 random, but if one of the factors, or blocks, or both, is fixed and the other is random, um, this is the expected mean square and the F statistic is over here that we need to use um, for this scenario. Now, SAS uses this um, last uh, effect set equal to zero constraint as opposed to the sum to zero constraint. So just be aware that this, this first one is correct for SAS. Um, so what I'm going to do is divide both of these mean squares by the interaction in order to get the correct S statistic for testing uh, my hypotheses for this model. So here's your PROC GLM. And so you can see I've got this test down here. If my null hypothesis is that all the blocks are the same, um, and then the uh, alternative hypothesis is that I'm getting different reflectivity levels from different manufacturers, um, then I need to do, use that interaction um, for that error term. And the same thing with the coding. If my null hypothesis is that the codings are the same, um, that's my error term. Also note that I'm, I'm using this vertical bar between the factors. That means I want both factors and all their interactions with a two-factor model. I just need um, the interaction between block and coding. That would mean that um, for uh, different blocks, um, maybe different codings are um, better. For example, maybe a dark coding is better um, for plates that come from this manufacturer, whereas the light coding is better for plates that come from the other manufacturer. That's the interaction. Um, so I can go ahead and run this, and you can see how the default F statistics are going to not be the same. This is the, you want the type 3 sums of squares um, in most cases. Um, and you can see these F values 1 and 99.59 are not the same thing as these F values down here. So you want to use these. These are the correct P values here. And then the interaction is OK, because you want it to be um, divided by the MSE, as you can see over here. Um, another scenario is um, suppose both the block and the factor are fixed. For example, I have only two manufacturers that I'm interested in, and I only have two types of coding that I'm interested in. So I haven't randomly selected manufacturers or coatings. I, I only have two of each that I'm interested in, and both of them are in the model. I sampled from both of those, um, then you can just use the default PROC GLM with this model statement. Um, and the default um, results are correct in that case. So here's what you've got. Um, that's all you need. And then 
If both block and factor are random, you can see from um, the handout from Dr. Longnecker up here, both F1 and F2 are random, then your F statistic will again have to be divided by um, that interaction term in both of the um, factors but the interaction term will be fine and so I'm going to run the same thing again and um, you can see again you want to be careful and not use these up here but use these down here these are your um, correct F statistics and p-values one thing you want to watch out for when you're running these um, models with random factors and blocks is you want to be careful about this random statement. So if you go searching for help on the uh, how to do models with random factors or blocks in them, um, you may uh, bump into this statement, but it's not actually giving you what you think it's giving you. So if we run this, let's look back at um, what we were supposed to get with the block being random. This is when I tested um, using the actual um, hypothesis declarations. Um, when I did that, remember my F value was 2.21 and 218. Um, however, look at what we spat out back up here um, when we declared block to be uh, random. So it, it gave us the expected mean squares in SAS. That was nice of it, but it didn't use those expected mean squares to actually um, take block and divide that uh, mean square by the interaction mean square. As you can see up here, it just it still divides it by the error mean square. I'm still getting one and 99 instead of what I expected. So it'll it the random statement may help in that you can figure out what you're supposed to divide by, um, but especially with more complicated models with three factors and blocks and things, um, some that are random, some are not. Um, but it, it doesn't actually follow through and create F statistics that are correct based on those expected mean squares. So you have to be careful and, and not use that random statement, but go ahead and declare your hypotheses by hand.